Hi guys, welcome to today's tutorial on some NCA level two and level three chemistry. Now I'm going to cover um, both level two and level three Lewis diagrams and shapes of molecules in this particular uh, in this particular video. And what I will do, I'll timestamp it in the description. So if you are someone that's year twelve, you just need to hear the year twelve section, and you can save the year thirteen. You know, save the video to your like list or watch later list. Um, and when you do year thirteen chemistry, you can watch a year thirteen. But um, and if you are year, if you're a year thirteen student, um, the year twelve stuff will be beneficial. But um, you know, just as a reminder to um, because there, sometimes you might be required to do some level two Lewis diagrams and shapes. Um, so let's get into it. So, okay, so we're going to start with some um, NCA level two content. So we're going to look at the Lewis diagrams of NCA level two. Okay, so we're looking at the two chem um, for the first bit. Now, just with Lewis diagrams, I like to use a particular method um, that if you've seen my previous um, videos on the um, exam questions, um, clips then you might be familiar with it um, but this is what I tend to do like say for example this is only for two chemistry okay this is not for three chemistry um, and this applies to anything everything you learn in level two okay so for example CO2 how do I draw the Lewis diagram for CO2 so this is what I tend to do I put the atoms um, so one carbon two oxygen and then I find out how many um, valence electrons they have so carbon has four oxygen has six oxygen has six um, this needs eight this needs eight this needs eight to have a full shell and then I add the numbers up so this is 16 this is 24 um, so what it means is that right now I have 16 valence electrons but in order for carbon dioxide to form a stable molecule to covalent bond you know to share electrons I need a total of 24 you can't just create 24 electrons if you only have 16 so this is when they start sharing electrons but um, it's not even sharing that's why the bonds are polar but I'll cover that in the polarity video in a bit um, a bit later so 24 minus 16 is 18 uh, is 18 is 8 electrons 8 electrons um, per per one bond is 2 electrons so that means I have 4 bonds okay so what does that mean so C so put the carbon in the middle and then one, two, three, four, and then make sure your oxygen, uh, make sure everything around, um, every single atom has a full valence shaft. That's why I did four dots. That's why I did, f uh, oops, that's why I did, go away. Um, why is it not going away? Stupid thing. All right, there we go. Um, that's why I did this, this, this this because um, if I were to go a little bit slower if we go back to you know four bonds one two three four four lines and this is where I always ask my students if you look at this oxygen exclusively how many bonds does it have right now it has two bonds right here so that's four electrons and needs eight we figured out we decided it needs eight electrons on the um, to have a full valence shelf so it's one two Three, four. So that's right. That's uh, that's why the oxygen is stable because that's eight electrons. Same with this particular oxygen on the right hand side. And you may ask, why do I not need to do anything with the carbon? Because if you look at the carbon that's in the middle, that's already got eight electrons around it, which are the four bonds. So four bonds, one line is two electrons. You know, if you're really struggling with chemistry, just think of one line, uh, two electrons, and the four lines, eight electrons. Yay! It's quite happy. Okay, so this works quite well. I'm going to give you another example like SO2. Um, so same thing, SOO, sulfur has six, oxygen has six, oxygen has six. And you may go, how do you know this? Like, how do you know, yes, six, six, six. This is where you look at the periodic table. Um, under group 16, you have oxygen here, you have sulfur here. So they're group 16 elements. So the last digit of the group number tells you how many valence electrons they have. Okay. Or if you want to go the long way, like say sulfur has the electron arrangement of, um, uh, sorry, oxygen is eight for the atomic number. So it's two, six um, for for sulfur is 16, so it's 286. So you can do it the long way, but you don't need to. Okay, so this needs 8, this needs 8, this needs 8. So right now it has 18, it needs 24. So 24 take away 18, that's going to be 6 electrons. 6 electrons that means divided by 2, that's going to give us 3 bonds, and that means we'll have SOO, 3 bonds, 1, 2, 3. Um, it doesn't matter which one the double bond goes to because they are both oxygens. Um, and look at this oxygen. Right now it has two lines on the right hand side. So that's four electrons. 
I need one, two, three, four, four more. If you look at the sulfur, right now it has three bonds around it, so it needs two more to make up the eight. If you look at this oxygen, it right now has two electrons on the left, so you need one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so everything is happy. So you need to be able to do the Lewis diagrams. It's very, very essential that you do um, know how to do these um, because if you can't do Lewis diagrams, you can't do shapes. If you can't do shapes, you can't do polarity. Okay, um, now just with some and um, and some people ask me this question like, um, let me give you do I have a space down there. All right, spoiler alert, it's a tetrahedral shape, but we'll get to that a bit later. Right, so, for example, someone asked me COCl, COCl2, and they look at this and they go, which one goes in the middle? Like, how do I know? Like, they can do COCl, Cl, you know, you can go four, six, seven, seven, and then you go eight, 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 eight 32. Um, that's 28, no, can't math, um, uh, 24, so 24, 32 minus 24 is 8 electrons, which means 4 bonds, so that means you need to have 4 bonds, I mean, once you've done organic chemistry, if you're, if you're already someone that's already done organic chemistry, you don't even need to use this method when you see something like this, why? Because you should know that carbon always bond 4 times, except in carbon monoxide um, and in graphite. So those are some um, anomalies. They don't follow the that particular trend. Um, but then oxygen always spawned twice. You know, some minor exceptions, but nothing major. Chlorine normally bond once. So if you look at this, um, and, and you go, why does carbon bond four times? Because carbon has four valence electrons. So carbon looks like this, one, two, three, four valence electrons. So you can bond here, you can bond here, you can bond here, you can bond here, so it bonds four times. So, and when you get COCl2 and you don't know what goes in the middle, always put the carbon in the middle and always put the, and put the things around it. Like I can put the O here, put the Cl here, put the Cl here. And here comes a question, I have four bonds. It's pretty straightforward, they need to bond once each. But then you're like, which one gets the last one? Which one gets the last bond? And this is where you need to understand oxygen need to bond twice. Why is that? Because oxygen has the electron arrangement two, two, six. So it's one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Can you see you can bond once here? And you can bond another one, uh, another one here. So it has two bonds. Okay, so put your oxygen in the middle. Uh, sorry, the oxygen was two bonds, carbon in the middle and then make sure you put the dots around the Lewis diagrams, otherwise it will be marked wrong, okay? Now just with the um, anomalies, we love, you know how we love anomalies in chemistry, um, one way to help people to remember, if you were, you know, if you're reading this as year 12, um, you're doing level two chemistry, what's the second letter on the alphabet, which is B? So the one starting with B, which is boron, and beryllium, these two are a little bit weird, um, boron only has a maximum of six, can only hold up to six valence electrons, and beryllium only can hold to f um, hold up to four. Okay, so a really good example, like say BeCl2. Um, so if you were to do this, BeCl, Cl, this is two, seven, seven, this is four, eight, eight. So this number is no longer eight. Um, so this is going to be 20, uh, 16, uh, so it'd be 20 minus 16 is 4 electrons, 4 electrons is 2 bonds. Okay, so 2 bonds means B, E, C, L, 1 bonds on the left, 1 bonds on the right. Make sure your chlorine has 8 electrons around it. Now note the beryllium itself, it doesn't, you don't put the dots around it, don't do that, don't put dots around it because it only needs 4 valence electrons. Right now it, has, it already has 4. It has one here, uh, so one bond here, one bond here, so that's four electrons, so it's already quite stable. Okay, so that's the Lewis diagram. So boron is the same thing, start with six, um, but that's the year 12 Lewis diagrams. Okay, now really quickly with the shapes. So to do the shapes, um, now these are the, some 3D diagrams. If, for example, if we do CH4, um, so it looks like this, and this is such a horrific way of doing it because this is showing a two this is a two-dimensional diagram and if you were to show this to any 
student you know that don't do chemistry and ask them what the bond angle is like if you ask them the angle between that and that they will say it's 90 degrees because it looks 90 degrees because it's two-dimensional but if you actually look at this particular diagram this is 109.5 degrees because what these guys do this is electron this whole block we say that's electron uh, density this is a region of electron density this is the region of electron density this is the region of electron density so you have four regions of electron density and they want to push each other they want to repel each other as far away as possible to minimize repulsion so they're not going to be 90 degrees is not far enough 109.5 is as far as you can get and they want to stay away from each other to minimize repulsion and they'll be stable that way okay so this is so when you have four regions of electron density and when all of them are bonded you have got a tetrahedral uh, tetrahedral arrangement and because you can see all four of them so it's a tetrahedral shape okay so this is tetrahedral again you can find lots of um, you should have lots of notes from your teachers or from um, um, from the, uh, the study guide which I would highly recommend you to read through if you struggle with it I, I still remember I've um, been teaching for, for a little while now, but I still remember my first year. I survived my first year of teaching just with that book. That's how good it is, the NCA Level 2 Study Guide. And um, if you're Level 3, NCA Level 3 Study Guides, okay? So tetrahedral. Now, just before we move on with the tetrahedrals, before we go look at the T-shapes and stuff, um, I would like to just use this shape to go through some other... Um, go through some other shapes as well okay so for example if I have you know the one that we did which is SO2 SO2 looks like this we drew this before no oh, this one's three not a good one uh, let me choose uh, NH3 NH3 so ammonia is probably the best one here NH3 yeah so how many regions of electron density does it have? It has one, two, three, four. So this has four regions of electron density. So you can think of this blob is that, this blob is that, this blob is that, and this blob is that. Okay, it doesn't matter. It makes no difference. You can rotate it around. It makes absolutely no difference. So you still have four regions of electron density. So you still have a tetrahedral now. Be careful, it's not tetrahedral shape. You have a tetrahedral arrangement. Why? Because you've got four regions that are wanting to push each other away. That results in a tetrahedral arrangement. But because this one is a, um, a pair of electrons, we can't see electrons. So you can't see this. You can't see this part, top half. Okay, so what you could do, you know, grab a book, grab your phone, whatever, cover this top bit off, like cover that up. And then you can see that you can't see that. You can only see this blob, this blob, this blob, and this blob. And if you were to connect the lines together, can you see that looks like a triangle, that looks like a pyramid? So this is why when you get situations like this, three of them are bonded out of the four, and you have one lone pair, which is not doing anything. So you have a tetrahedral arrangement, but you have a trigonal pyramid shape. Okay, why is it with... Um, we really literal when it comes to the naming. So it looks like a pyramid if you connect it together and it's a three sides of trigonal, trigonal pyramid. Okay, so that's that. Now, if we were to give you another one, I'm just recycling the same diagram. Um, let's do water. If we were to do water, I'm just gonna cheat a little bit. Water H2O, so the same thing. Your oxygen, because draw us like that. So this is one region, two regions, three regions, four regions of the electron density. Okay, so still four. So it's still tetrahedral arrangement. So you can imagine this blob is over there, this blob is over here, this H is over there, and this H is over there. All right, doesn't really matter. But same concept. You can't see. You can't see these electrons. You can't visually see them. So this blob and this blob, you can't see them. So what can you see? You can only see this and this. And if, I, if you draw it out like that, can you see that's a bent line? So that's a bent um, shape. So because out of your four, you got two bonded and two long pairs of electron density, you still have um, you still have a tetrahedral arrangement, but you have a you have a bent shape. 
Now, our, when you have tetrahedral arrangements, the bond angle is always going to be 109.5 degrees. Okay, now as a year 12, um, you're not required to differentiate between the bond angle of a tetrahedral, a trigonal pyramid, and a bench shape. If you just say 109.5 degrees for all of them, then it's fine. If assuming that they have a, you have a tetrahedral arrangement, okay, you've got four things bonded around the central atom. Okay, so actually the bond angle will be a little bit different because uh, the, the valence electrons, the lone pair of electrons will exert more repulsion but that's a little bit harder to the year 12 syllabus if you if we i think we'll, i'm pretty sure we'll be happy if you just told us it's 109.5 degrees okay so let's move on um, next one the basic example for this one is bh3 or bf3 doesn't matter bh3 looks like this now remember boron only needs six valence electrons so three bonds so right now three bonds very happy so can you see this h is over there this h is over there and this H is over there. So this is a trick, again, three-sided. So it's almost like this. So you can draw this on your, uh, it's like the Mercedes-Benz logo. You, you have a line, yep, yep, yep. It's like a pi. Imagine if you have a pi, you even divide it by three times. So the bond angle is gonna be 120 degrees because you evenly divide it by three. Um, 360 divided by three is 120. So you have three regions of electron density. You have what we call um, trigonal planar trigonal again means three planar means it's in one plane all right so there's no going into the computer coming out of the computer it's all in phase of your computer screen you can think of it like that okay so everything's connected um, therefore this is trigonal planar shape trigonal planar arrangement and 120 degrees okay but what if we change it again what if we have a little bit different um, something a little bit different what if we have SO2 SO2 looks like this Okay, so two looks like this. So this still has, ready? This is one, two, three regions of electron density. So it's still trigonal plane arrangement, but because this blob, which is a long pair of electrons, you can't see that. If you can't see that, you can only see this. And what shape is that? So if you got two bonded and then one long pair, you will have a bent shape because it's bent. I mean, look at it, that's a bent shape. You can't see that. So if you can't see it, it's still exerting repulsion, but you just can't see it. If you can't see it, remember the shape is when you, uh, when we, um, it's not so much a high school, but if you do end up doing some chemistry at university, when you do use the programs to draw the orbitals and everything, draw the shape, you will, you know, take that into consideration because that's what it looks like, okay? And last one, which is the easiest one, linear. Um, that just, just think of a straight line. Um, you have something here, something here, something here. What's the bond angle between that and that? It's obviously 180 degrees this way, 180 degrees this way. Um, so it's 360 all together. And the basic example is CO2. Um, okay, so you got one, two regions of electron density. One is this one, one is that one, and that's just a straight line. Okay, nothing too difficult here. All right, so if you were... Um, if you're here um, because you're year 12, um, I'll, I'll definitely do some polarity stuff. And I'll definitely, um, someone asked me in the comments um, of my previous video about uh, uh, 2.1, the titration standard. Um, I'll definitely show you the calculation stuff. I'll def definitely talk about the variables and the planning, the investigation, the whole the whole block. Um, I might record some practical bit as well, um, but that's that depends. We don't teach that standard until the end of term two. So if you are someone from another school that's doing the internal a little bit earlier. Sorry, I can't help you with the practical part, but I'll do the um, I'll do the um, the calculation bit. Okay, so if you're year 12, this is where I will say goodbye to you. Um, and year 13, let's get into our NCA level three stuff. Okay, so with the NCA level three, you still need to know the basic stuff. You know the things that we just did. That that wasn't waste. That wasn't just for the year 12. So it's for the year 13 as well. But if you're doing the level three stuff. Um, there's a thing that we call that's um, expanded octet. So that means if you look on the period table, everything after silicon, you can now you understand orbitals is that in the d orbitals, uh, we can put more electrons into the d orbitals. So, so that means the octet is no longer the octet can be expanded. Okay, so that means 
it, it could be it could be eight could be ten it could be twelve you know it, it could be different numbers so it really depends so it's a different mindset when you do this type of um, when you do this type of um, a Lewis diagram for year 13 syllabus and I'll give you the the best example let me do which one should we do let's do SF4 SF4 and this is how I tend to do it okay and if you if you are someone that you know did really well in year two, uh, level two came and you look at this you look at SF4 you go wow that's a tetrahedral right there SF4 four things bonded boom 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 four straight lines tetrahedral and then that will be very very incorrect because so far can have an expanded octet because it's after silicon you can fit electrons into the d orbital so you can take more than eight okay so how do we what is the method of doing this you need to guys you need to make sure that you must count and i'm going to write this down count the number of valence electrons first of valence electrons and you must do this first okay you must do this no exceptions count count it first so sulfur is six um fluorine seven so six plus seven times four um is 34. let's just make sure don't embarrass, embarrass myself around the whole internet can't math yeah 34 electrons so what does that mean your Lewis diagram must have 34 electrons and we know sulfur must go in the middle because you know you can bond more than once so fluorine only bond once now doesn't it does it make sense if I just single bond everything because fluorine only bond once because it's a halogen um, you only need to share one electron so you bond once and so all of the fluorines so I'm just doing the skeleton um, you know bond them once and then put the eight electrons six electrons to make the eight around the fluorines and let's count okay so let's count how many um, electrons we have so let's oh, look at uh, bring that. so see can you see that's eight this is eight this is eight and this is eight four times eight is 32 I need to have 34 electrons my diagram right now only shows 32 electrons so that means the sulfur has got a long pair of electron okay so that's how it is really really important that you don't look at something like SF4. I mean, you know, with the with the PCL5s, with the SF6s, you know, things like that, it's really obvious as an expanded octet because you're bonding more than four things. But when you get something like SF4 or CLF3, which I'll cover a little bit later, like XEF4, it's not a tetrahedral shape. It's not a tetrahedral way of doing it because you need to understand that the existence of D orbitals allows the electrons, the valence electrons to you know take shelter in those three spaces and then they can participate in bonding okay so always count the number of electrons first always do that and then you you know you, you're trying to have 34 electrons and then just single bond everything complete the valence electrons for the surrounding um, atoms and then add it up and then look at the two different numbers whatever the different whatever the difference is it should be a whole number it should be either two four uh, I'm trying to think, it'll be more than six, uh, no more than six, two or four, um, and then they go around the central atom. Okay, so let's look at some more examples. All right, I'm gonna do a sh do the shape as well as the. So this is F SF six, the same thing, SF six. Um, all right, so sorry, just had a bit of technical difficulty. So this is going to be forty eight. Um, so I need to have 48 electrons around my central atom sulfur, so SF6, I'll just draw it here, SF3, do, 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 do. that looks really ugly for some reason, I'll do one here, 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 here. and then just single bond everything, and then complete, complete that, and then you can double check. So that's eight, 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 six, eight is 48, so I have 48 electrons. So this is what we call an octahedral shape. Okay, so this is octahedral, we have six bonding, six groups of atom bonding to the center atom, and you can see the bond angle is going to be, you're gonna have three, uh, sorry, not three, two bond angles, because if you look at these two, that's, um, 
90 degrees. Okay, if you look at these two, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. But if you look at the bond angle between these two, it's almost like you have one, two, three, four. If you were to draw, can you see that's a square base? And so obviously the bond angle is going to be um, 90 degrees as well. You can think of it like that. Um, and then I'm trying to, yeah, because with the bond angles, there's multiple bond angles. You can even look at the bond angle between that, but we try not to be too picky with the bond angles. Like no one really asks you to identify the bond angles because they're multiple bond angles, okay? It really depends on which way you're looking at it from. Okay, but it's mainly 90, 90, 90 degrees with um, octahedral. Um, so that's that particular shape, okay? So if you look at the next one, now I really want to, let, let me put this one beside that one there. Can you see the difference between octahedral and this shape that we have underneath? Can you see the only difference is this blob that's missing down here? So a really good example of that will be ICL5. So ICL5 will look like this. CL, 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 CL. Now you can, you know, I'm not gonna do, you can use my method and just try to do it again, blah, 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 but then you're gonna find a long pair of electrons down here. Okay, if you use my method, this is the answer, you can check it. So this still has an octahedral arrangement. Why? Because you got one, two, three, four, five, six regions of electron density, but only five of them are bonded. So so this long pair you can still it still repel the other parts, but you can't see it. You can't see it. If you can't see it, it's not part of the shape. So this is a square square pyramid shape. Or square pyramidal shape. Why is it a square pyramid? You know, just connect these together. Can you see that looks like a square? And if I connect all of these lines to this, can you see that looks like a pyramid? So it's a square based pyramid. Okay, very, very sophisticated, I know. All right, next one, this is X, um, XCF4. And if you can try to do this on your own, XCF4, I don't know, you found a pause and draw this. Um, but it's gonna look like this. Xenon is a uh, inert gas, but because it's so big, the valence electrons are so further away, um, they can actually do part participate in some um, covalent bonding. Um, but with the xenon um, tetrafluoride, XCF4, can you see if I go back to our to our parent shape of the octahedral? Um, can you see the the top and the bottom is now missing? You only have the square. The only thing that, so the top bit, which is up here, which is a long pair of electrons, which is something you can't see. Then you have something underneath, which is this long pair of electrons, which you can't see. So you only have the square base left. So this is a square planar. So this is still, you still have an octahedral arrangement because you've got six, but only four of them are bonded. So you can only see the four. So they have a square planar shape. Okay, so that's why, why do I have an E at the end? Um, so that's why it's, um, it's really, I, I just found this way quite easy. Like you look at the biggest thing and then you're just chopping, cor uh, you're chopping corners off because you can't see them, okay? So let's look at the next one. Oh, this one's quite fun. This one, let's do PF5. PF5 is gonna look like this. I'm gonna draw it similar to how I have it on the left hand side. So PF5, so that's what it looks like. So if you were to draw the um, the 3D diagram, something I didn't mention, you can do it like this, okay. Now, what shape would that be called? So you've got five regions of electron density. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, five regions of electron density. All of them are connected. Can you guys see this is a tri triangular base? If you connect those together, that's a, tri that's a triangle. And if you ignore the bottom half, and if you were to connect the top bit with every single one of them, can you see that looks like a pyramid? And if you and then now if you look at the bottom bit and connect that to all the bottom part, can you see there's another pyramid underneath? This is why this is called trigonal bipyramidal. Because there are two pyramids. Yeah? So again you have got 
um, two bond angles you got um, the bond angle between this is 120 degrees and if you look at that that's 180 degrees um, and if you look at that that's um, 90 degrees okay so the multiple bond angles but you know you can refer to textbooks for the normally we we'll just look at 90 and 120 okay so PF5 now if you now I'm gonna put these next to that one if you look at the PF5 and look at this shape down here can you see can you imagine if I just have this shape up here but then I rotate it this way so this goes here and then so these two are these two and then these two that's going into the screen and out of the screen are these two and these two okay so this is a good example of SF4 okay so we did SF4 before SF4 is not I'm going to draw it similar to how they did it here SF4 is not a tetrahedral shape it looks like this okay so you still got five regions of electron density one two three four five five regions of electron density all uh, four of them are connected and one of them is a lone pair which is up here so that's normally up there but you can't see it you know you can't see it so we have a seesaw shape because doesn't that look like a seesaw i mean just look at it it's a seesaw shape so when you have five regions of electron density four of them are connected you have a seesaw shape okay because you're kind of tilting it on the side then you can literally you know, uh, make this with molly mods and you can see them moving around okay last one last one we can do clf3 clf3 looks like this i should do it, do it this way if you do clf3 you're going to realize that um, if you try to draw the lewis diagram yourself you're going to see the it has two lone pairs electron so how many regions of electron density does it have one two three four five regions of electron density five regions three of them are connected which is that 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 so if you look further back at our tetrahedral i'm uh, sorry trigonal pyramid arrangement it's kind of like this you don't see you don't see this and this anymore you just see that okay and if you rotate it it looks like the letter T. So when you have five electron, five regions of electron density, which gives you the square pyramid, uh, which gives you a trigonal pyramid, a trigonal bipyramid arrangement. But if you only have three bonded, you have a T shape structure. Okay. So hopefully this um, has been helpful. It's all about. I actually, to be honest, I actually think the year thirteen chemistry um, content is a little bit easier than year twelve to get used to. Okay, because most of us. If you if you already done the basics um, in year twelve, getting the year thirteen part shouldn't be too difficult. Okay, um, so I'll probably do a video on polarity a little bit later, and then maybe wrap up the topic with some MC delta T calculation and maybe some entropy as well. Okay, so hopefully um, you guys found this helpful. So as always, um, link uh, share it with your friends, subscribe if you haven't, and um, yeah, like the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.